guys. So I just got home from work and I was going to do a thrift book order um, haul earlier, but I only got one of them. So, and I, so I didn't open it and I figured I'd wait until I got a couple more. So, and today I got a couple more. So I can't remember all of what I got, of course, but I did open the first bag that came and oh yes yeah, so the first one I got was it's called circle of songs songs chants and dances for ritual and celebration and um, it's a book and CD pack it has a bunch of songs with music for the songs and um, on thrift books you're never quite sure but it said that it actually included the CD, which it does. Hopefully it plays. I obviously haven't played it yet, but um, it would be great if it played so I could hear uh, the music. But this is like really good ritual music for pagans. And um, trying to get to the beginning here. <laughs> it was put together by Kate Marks. Uh, and it says table of contents, creating sacred space, uh, the elements, honoring our relations, woman power, male power, healing and love, peace and unity, and the appendix. There's 260 pages, so there's um, the power of chanting, vocal exercises, working with chants, drumming, musical accompaniment. Sacred Spiral, it talks a lot about, um, you know, what kind of music you can do in your circle. Creating Sacred Space is Chapter 1. Um, Temple Round, Now I Walk in Beauty, Where I Sit is Holy. Spirit is Around Us. Oh, Great Spirit, Calling in Our Power. Archangel Invocation. So there are, there's a whole lot of songs in here. The earth is our mother. We are one with the soul of the earth. So I was, I'm really excited to kind of listen to some of it and see. And then, like I said, they had the actual music with some of it. So I figured I could get my uh, son who plays guitar to learn some of them too. So maybe he could do them when we are in circle. That was really a cool book. I'm really excited. And the fact that it actually has a CD in there, sometimes it'll say, um, you know, it comes with a CD, but if it's only in good condition or unacceptable or something, it may not have the CD in it. Um, so I have, uh, and with this one, I messaged the seller. There's a way you can message the seller and ask them if the CD is there or not. Same thing with like tarot cards. A lot of times some of the tarot books that they sell um, are just the book and don't have the tarot. Sometimes you get lucky and they do have the tarot cards there though. So um, I wanted to, there's a whole series of books uh, about that are like adult, not adult necessarily, but they are a little bit more in-depth kind of fairy tales. And this one I think is the second in the series. Ooh, let me get my glasses. This is called Snow and Summer, Fairest of Them All. And this is by Jane Yolen, who does a lot of books that are very pagany. I don't know if they're necessarily pagan, but they're very nature-based books um, for kids. And uh, I believe that this one is, you know, kind of um, a little bit more for older kids or, you know, adults who believe in magic. Um, so it doesn't say, but it does look like not a kid's book, you know. So uh, there is, I swear this is the second one I wish they would say in here. I'd have to look up on my thrift books. Um, if this is the second in the series, but this one is called Snow and Summer, Fairest of Them All. So 
so um, I'm excited. It's a, a story about uh, Snow White. I'll read you the back. Uh, it says, a voice whispered out of the darkness. Is that a true question for me, Snow and Summer? It wasn't Stepmama's voice, but it was a voice I knew, though I'd only heard it once before. Heard and tried to forget, but magic is hard to forget. I slipped into the darkened room. Mirror, I said. Not that question, but another one. Speak it then, the mirror told me. Mirror, I hesitated, took a deep breath, got my courage up and asked, who should I fear the most? In the dark, something stirred. There was a shushing sound. I shuddered. Did stepmama keep snakes in here? Even if they were in boxes, the sound was enough to make my knees go weak. If there were serpents in the house, as well as stepmama, then both my greatest fears were realized together. Suddenly, the mirror turned on, lit up like a picture show. Fear the hunter, the mirror's masked face said, startling me out of my memories. Fear the hunter, fear the knife, fear the edge that takes a life. The hunter, who's that, I asked. But the mirror had gone silent. In the silence, I heard a car door slam right outside. Stepmama was home. So doesn't that sound good? I want to start reading now, but I will continue to open <laughs> the books that I have. Okay, now I did something with my scissors. You know, I put them right next to me. <laughs> okay, so let me open the next package here. This is all one thrift books order. Uh, it just comes from different places. It depends on, you know, where they come from. And again, if you have not seen my thrift books hauls before, I order. I usually order $50 worth because every $50 you get a $5 off coupon. So I always have one coupon. And after you go to $10, it's free shipping. So it's wonderful. Okay, now this is the... Um, oh, yes. Okay, so the, the first book in that series is called Snow White Blood Red. Maybe that isn't part of the series. Because I feel like this one is the third one. Snow White Blood Red is the first book. I feel like this is the third book. Let me see if I can find... Snow White. Maybe this is the second book. Okay, this one is called Blackthorn White Rose. And this is edited by Ellen Detlow, D-A-T-L-O, and Terry Windling. And I know this is part of the series for sure. I swore this was the second or third in the series. But anyways, the, the first in this series is called Snow White Blood Red. So let me read the inside cover here. It says, Once Upon a Time. And they're all kind of similar. I decided to get similar, like, you know, fairy tales that were magical and a little bit more intense for older kids or for you know really older kids once upon a time a seduced prince willingly and knowingly fell prey to a sensuous usurper's treachery a flesh-eating ogre gambled in the front in the footlights the nefarious plans of three mugs and a mole were foiled by a backwater band of brimmy town musicians once Upon a Time, World Fantasy Award winners Ellen Datlow and Terry Windling compiled an extraordinary anthology of adult fairy tales entitled Snow White Blood Red. Now, once more, they return us to the realm of myth and the fantastic with 18 remarkable tales that remold our most cherished childhood fables into things darker and sexier, more resonant and appealing to grown-up tastes and sensibilities. Here are the wondrous works of masters who cloak the magical fictions we heard at Grandma's knee in the mantles of darkness and dread. Here are stories strange and miraculous of rare and haunting beauty from Roger Zelanzi's delightful narrative of a contemporary knight's service to his godfather death to Peter Straub's blood-chilling examination of a gargantuan Cinderella and her terrible twisted art. Between these covers, Patricia C. Reed entices and enthralls with a tale of a deep curse, a love stronger than death and time, while Storm Constantine transforms a charming and timeless fable into a decidedly horrific yarn about a conjured prince too good to be true. 
Once upon a time, the gingerbread man ran gleeful and free. Now he flees in terror from the baking pan to the fire. Once upon a time, Rumpelstiltskin was a heinous villain. Now he's a victim, doomed to a cruel and tragic fate. Once upon a time, there was a childlike innocence. Now there is only the truth. All right, I am really going to love these books. So, and the good part is, obviously, that they are separate stories. So it's not like I have to start with the first one and I can't read this one until I get the first one because they're separate stories. So, I love it. Uh, I really like Jane Yolen's books. Uh, so this is another Jane Yolen book. She does write children's stories uh, that are, like I said, nature-based stories. This one is called The Wild Hunt. Uh, and I'll just read the back. Advanced praise for The Wild Hunt. The Wild Hunt is Jane Yolen's extravagantly surpassing herself by doing the seemingly impossible, creating a fantasy, sort of. Almost chapters that led, hold on to your helmets, in the landscapes of fantasy literature itself. The Wild Hunt will, guaranteed, send readers of any age and all any and all ages scurrying back to that first sort of chapter to begin the wizardry all over again. That didn't tell me anything about the book. So I'm going to read the inside cover. <laughs> Wild Hunt is once more on the ride. Picture this, a great house in a snowy field. Within the house are quiet boy Gerald and a white cat who knows more than she is telling. At the same time, in the same house, in the same field, but somehow not the same, there is an altogether different boy, a leaping, slipping, tumbling, always in the middle of things boy named Gerond. Here too is a cat, exactly the same cat, and a big floppy dog who has a tail long enough for trouble. Far beyond the house is a rocky outcropping on which a dark party gathers, a pack of slavering black hounds, a troop of invisible horsemen, a gruesome moss man and their master, a man in a horned helm with red coal for eyes, and death is there too. For death always comes along when the hunt goes riding. Ooh. So there are illustrations in this, but it's, again, it's a chapter book. Uh, but there are some illustrations, too. So maybe for older kids or, you know, really older kids. Okay. Two more packages. Oh, my goodness. This one only has one book in it. So, I'm so excited. I love these books. I love to grow my library, and I can't wait to really offer it, not offer the whole library, but offer the service of, like, a pagan library to the community that I live. I think it'll be a great thing. And I'm never going to get this open. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Where are you? Oh. oh, come on. There's only one book in here. Why'd you make it so hard? Here we go. Okay. This one is... Okay, so this is an older book called Witch Stories for Bedtime. And this one is truly a, you know, I believe a, like a story time book. Yes. Uh, for kids. Um, but I remember this book kind of a little bit. It has different stories in it. Uh, came out in 1987. So I think I got it when my older boys were young, but it has different stories in it. And they are Edward and Anna, the magic island, which hers, which Wurzel, the witches who came to stay, Grumblog, the witch who didn't have a cat, Rachel and the magic stone. So, um, anytime there's, you know, stories about witches, I always get stories about witches. I can't, I can wait to have grandchildren. It's okay, boys, if you're watching. But I can't wait to have grandkids to spoil and read to. And they have no idea that they have a whole library that I've been brewing for years now um, called my, my grandkids' shelf. And I try to get books that are earth-based and nature-based and pagan and um because i want i want to teach i te taught my children uh, the way of the natural earth and i want to teach my grandchildren 
whenever they come. <gasps> oh, this is, this is a deck. I forgot I had another deck coming. Crystal Tarot. So I will do a separate video on the deck because I really liked these images. Okay, so that's it for now. I do have some more coming. And I hope you guys this week is going good. I had a horrible, awful migraine yesterday. And that's partly why I didn't come on yesterday anyways. And um, But I'm much better now. Um, and kind of, it's been raining here. So kind of, I'm thinking maybe spring is actually broke. It's supposed to get cold again and then warm again and stuff. But not cold enough to snow again, I don't think. So I will be feeling better very soon. <laughs> Blessings, guys. I'll do another video later.